Oh, that's better. <laughs> Good morning. Again with the producer. Hmm. At least we're consistent. That's true. <laughs> Let me do this. Oh, it's the Shakespeare section. I don't know if you can hear that. Would a rose be a sweet by another name? All right. You know, you just got to appreciate a reliability engineer who's also a music composer who also can incorporate a little bit of Shakespeare into a, a funk piece. So, good job, Quinn, as always. Okay, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, actually. Thank you for asking. How are you? I am happy it's this Monday and not last. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are. I am... Um, Tired? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, just, um, I'm emotionally worn out and I am emotionally filled because yesterday was the culmination of our big online fundraising week at the Arts Partnership. Thanks, thanks again to those thanks of you who donated. Um, and we had an amazing, amazing concert that, um, was just, just incredible. So Silverwinds Flute Quartet, African Arts Arena, which is a African drumming group out of Grand Forks, happens to be run by a student of mine from 15 years ago, Hamzat Koriko. And um, he was my student in my freshman English for international students class at MSUM. He's from Togo, Africa. Now he has a PhD. At Whatever, it, it's amazing. His his journey has been incredible and I reconnected with him after all those years last year. And then we brought his group um, to play yesterday. And that's the, I'm telling you all this because that's the um, impetus for today's inspired, no, Motivational Monday. So he has a new young woman playing with him named Tegan Kempe. And I just met her yesterday and she is a woman of color, and uh, they met on Juneteenth this year. So June 19th at an event in Grand Forks, and uh, she started drumming, and he put her on the spot yesterday during the event yeah. and asked her to talk about sort of why she's doing this work. And she, and I'm just gonna paraphrase this, and I'm sorry, Tegan, to paraphrase your words. God, this dog is consistently- Keep, keep going, we're good. Unbelievable timing. Um, Tegan said that what she loves about drumming is that she doesn't have to curate her emotions for anybody else. She gets to feel sad and angry and scared and um, all of the deep emotions that I think we're all feeling, but people of color, of course, are feeling it tenfold because they're the ones who are on the receiving end mm. of this terrible, terrible place that, that I think as white people we have been brought up to believe is all of the things that, that you know, sort of make you feel good. Home of the brave, land of the free, um, manifest destiny, um, work hard, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, and even you could be president one day. And all of these things, when in actuality, the truth for a number of people is, you might get shot in your bed, out jogging, when you're pulled over in your car, doing nothing wrong. That's not been my experience. Oh my gosh. Just keep going, it's all right. That has not been my experience. Um, and it has not been the experience of most white people. So that's not the motivational Monday talk, but that's where that's where Tegan came from. And what she what she ultimately came down on is that when she is sitting in front of her African drum, she can she can express all of that rage and emotion, and it does not judge her back. And so it is helping her navigate through the, the difficulty of being a person of color in this country. And why I wanted to talk about that is because that is not actually 
um, singular to people of color. It is singular to the human experience because we all have places that, and, and experiences in our lives that are disappointing, that are infuriating, that are unfair, that are volatile, that are scary. And we all need a place to release those emotions because we can't, we can't go through our lives with the emotions right on our surface or we become unbalanced by other people's opinions. We have to figure out how to carry those emotions, how to honor them, how to release them, and then how to, how to live in the world. So I wanted to show you, and a lot of people have seen this, I wanted to show you, this is my, boy the light is weird today. This is my journal that uh, a nurse, Susan, gave me when Maz went into the hospital. I not, you know I'm not a journaler. But these are the pages that I wrote um, in the time that Maz was in the hospital. And this is where I had the equivalent to Tegan's drum. I put down every thought I'd had for years, every emotion, every, every ounce of anger and sadness and fury and embarrassment and feeling stupid and crazy and uncertain. I put it all here. And you know what this journal did? which is exactly what Tegan said the drum does. It accepted it and it didn't judge it. And that is how when Maz Mary woke up, I was ready to, um, the video keeps cutting out, I'm hearing. Sorry, Sandy. When Maz woke up, that is how I was ready to move forward with him because I had found a place to express all of the many emotions which I had been holding and keeping so tightly wound up inside me. So you had a really interesting take on this when we started talking about it last night. Yeah. Um, for me, that was just the absolute complete opposite. I um I was telling Daniel I said it's like um there's some disciplines in physics um, when you get to like quantum levels and, th and fluctuations where you can actually see an effect before the cause, which to me just is just it's probably why I started disliking physics because it makes no sense. Um, you know you you see what happens before what what made it happen happened, but it's so it's complete opposite. But that's exactly um, what when Dana explained about the journal. I mean. For me, I had all these voices screaming in my head and I was trying to release them and the reason, and I thought that drinking helped and I didn't tweak that it, it was making it worse. So when I finally didn't drink, the thing I was trying to do to stop all the angst that was going on in my head was gone. So Dana, had her release in a journal and then when I woke up and mercifully um, my brain came with me um, I was ready to take a breath and move forward too and that's how our journey to this point started mm. so the, the the getting you without judgment getting everything out of you and then waking up almost receptive to to listen for the first time in a long time because what I was trying to quell was gone but it was gone because I stopped what I, what I was doing to try and quiet it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. <clears throat> um, and so the point of this for anybody watching who doesn't have an addiction challenge in their life is you have something. You know, it's a divorce, it's a job loss, it's a death of a parent, it's a, whatever it is, fill in the blank. You have something. And it's very likely that you are bottling it up, that you are putting the lid on it, trying to control it. So think about a pressure cooker or you're in an instant pot. If you seal the instant pot, 
you see that little release thing go like this as the pressure is building inside. And when the timer goes off and you hit venting, what happens is like a geyser or a geyser for you. Yeah. All of the all of the pressure shoots out of the top. You have to have a place to shoot the pressure out. And for Maz, he he was he was building pressure thinking he was releasing pressure by and yeah. that was just a terrible cycle. For me, this journal was where I released the pressure. For Tegan, it's a drum. What is it for you? Is it running? Is it writing? Is it dancing? Is it punching a pillow? Is it going for a long drive? Is it um, gardening? I mean, it doesn't have to be something violent. It doesn't have to be something, um, you know, that, that manifests in a physical release. It, it can be something calming but it has to be something. You have to have that pressure release or you will implode. You did implode. You know how Maz's body released his pressure? He almost bled to death. I watched this man, literally, I watched blood pour out of him. Unlike, think of the goriest movie you've seen. It was worse than that because it was relentless, it just out like a faucet out of his nose for hours. Yeah. That's how his body was releasing this pressure. And thank goodness Susan gave me a journal because I didn't even know what I was holding in until I, with no judgment, just started to write and I've told you many times the phrase I feel so stupid shows up hundreds hundreds of times um, because that's how I felt and the journal didn't say to me oh Dana you're not stupid or say to me boy you are stupid or say to me gosh I'm sorry you feel that way the journal did nothing the journal just received it and and had no opinion on it and so I said it as many times as I needed to say it to stop feeling stupid. And that is when my little pressure gauge settled. Yeah, and mine did almost the same thing, but in a completely different way. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you think, we talked about this before, about addiction and, and the part of your brain that does it, but if you don't have a pressure release, if you can't, do that release and, and, and release and, and well, achieve release and peace of mind. Biochemically, you're gonna go into a long-term stress, which is one of the leading causes of death yeah. in the modern world. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's connected with what is the leading cause of death in the United States, which is a heart, heart attack. Heart disease, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, what do you do if you, if you are stressed all the time? You either drink, you take drugs, or you eat. Well, or you exercise. Oh, I mean, you control no, but, it. You know, if, if you're not doing anything positive, you, people oh, oh, comfort oh, eat. People drink to forget. People, you know, get take a recreational drug or a combination of others. Or, you know, they indulge in all kinds of behavior. Negative behavior. Trying to push it down when in actuality what you need to do is let it go. Yeah. Easier said than done. Um, but I promise you... If you are thinking to yourself this morning, well, I'm, I'm managing the stress of whatever the extremely stressful thing in your life is. If you think you're managing it by just internalizing it, let me promise you, you are not. I thought I was managing it. And I will tell you that right now, talking about this experience, looking at this journal, I feel that tightness in my chest, my stomach feels knotted. I am right back where I was in the middle of February of 2017 and for years leading up to that. And the minute that I do this, I feel it start to move out of me. Actually, here's a, a quick general rule of thumb that I learned when I was in rehab. Get a, a single sheet of paper, A4, oh sorry, A4, um, 10 by eight, 
piece of paper. Eleven and a half by seven, I think, is what Thank the paper you. A is. A sheet of a, a sheet of letterhead paper and hold it in your hand like that. Now, if you can keep that still and think about something that bothers you, and if you can keep that still, then you don't have stress. If it moves at all, then you have to do something about it. Because really? I can guarantee you, if you think about why you're stressed, you won't hold that piece of paper still. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, so that's the motivation for today. Imagine, imagine that you are an instant pot or a pressure cooker. And you think you are holding all that stress, so you're unsealed. And the little thing is just like this because the pressure is so intense inside you over whatever stress is in your life right now. When you vent that instant pot and the steam shoots out, that is only when you can start to recover. So get the journal, do the meditation, go to rehab, take the walk, do the breathing, go for gardening, punch the pillow, Talk to, someone. Talk to some, do what you need to do to go from sealed to vented. I promise you, as terrible as you imagine it will be, in the moment, the hardness will be so worth it. So, so worth it. The release is the only place to begin to heal. So, have a great day. Monday, it's gonna be an amazing fall Monday. It is Indigenous Peoples Day. Do something to honor the fact that for an entire race of people, multiple hundreds of tribes of people, they are living with systemic pressure that goes back yeah. hundreds of years. I'd, I'd like to uh, a shout out from a historical point of view. Well done, South Dakota. Yes, I did say South Dakota. South Dakota was the first state of the Union to actually have a state mandate that it was no longer to be called Columbus Day. So, oh. well done, South Dakota. You don't wear masks, you don't believe in COVID, but good job on Indigenous people. Yeah, Day, see, South it's not, you know, every now and then you gotta, you got to appreciate what they do right. It's true. <laughs> so, find a way to honor the, the land that we are all on today that is stolen land and think about the pressure of um, that group of people and do something to honor the land, to honor the people, to honor the privilege we have of centuries of challenge. Do something for yourself to go from sealed to vented and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Have see a you good tomorrow. day. Bye. Bye.